Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In these dark times that we live in, and by the way, this is April 15th, 2024, last day to file your taxes if you live in the United States. In these dark times that we live in, our people are being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of the Lord. And that is in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, where the Lord, via Hosea, oh, and by the way, Hosea is a magnificent love story between the Lord and his people. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And we live in a time when Bible knowledge is, well, if it was a, a creature, an animal, it would be almost an extinction event. Seriously. I mean, I've had Bible books written by people from a hundred years ago. So much in-depth knowledge and better than anything written in the last, oh, I don't know, 50, 70 years? Well, my lifetime. I'm almost 70 years old, and you know what? Um, I used to watch Billy Graham a little bit on Sunday television. And even as a middle school kid, junior high, whatever you want to call it, I knew he was a fraud. I mean, that's one of the reasons why... Well, that's part of the, I, that's my excuse for walking away from the Lord when I went to high school. But, you know, let's face it. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do, have fun, uh, chase girls, not very successfully, by the way, but uh, drugs, drinking, rock and roll. Yeah. Now I can't stand those things. Well, I still like girls, but I don't chase them. Uh, that's kind of a joke, people. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, the reason why the bad seed, and we'll talk more about this, wants to lead our people into sin is because God... Well, they know that God will withdraw his protection when we are into sin and that he will allow us to be destroyed. And we have no knowledge. Most, well, I don't know about most, but many people don't even know what sin is. The Bible declares that sin is transgression of the law, breaking of the law. You know, speed limit's 45 miles an hour and you're doing 48. You're transgressing or breaking the law. And if the law doesn't have a penalty, well, then it's a suggestion. God's laws have penalties. There are certain sins called abominations, which brings curses upon the land and because I want to post this on a certain tube channel I cannot enumerate what those abominations are but if you want to know what they are well give me a second and I'll uh, be happy to uh, have you look them up Proverbs 6 chapter 6 verse 16 
list seven things that are an abomination unto the Lord. Leviticus 18.22 tells you what an abomination is. And uh, it is very prevalent today. And uh, yeah, Leviticus 18.22, boy, they want to get rid of that. Big time. Leviticus 20 and verse 13. Uh, boy, that's a big one. And America is full of it. Absolutely full of it. Uh, graven images. Worshipping other gods. Abomination. Uh, let's see. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Boy, that's, oof. Yeah. That's another abomination. You know, it's, it's sad because we don't have people, hardly anybody teaches this stuff. It's just, it's sad. It really is. In Jeremiah 6.15, Jeremiah asks, Were they ashamed? Who? God's people. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. Nope, they weren't. Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. You ever seen a person that um, a, a righteous person and you tell them a dirty joke and they blush? Yeah. There's only one group of people on the face of the earth that blush. Only one. That should tell you who the Lord's people are. Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down. Cast down where? Well, if heaven's above, take a guess what's below. Yeah. H-E double hockey sticks. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. So, all right, let's go take a look at uh, seed. Now, I apologize it takes so long in between these Bible studies, but uh, I got two strikes on my channel. Next time I slip up and say something, well, the channel's gone. Do you know I've had over a million views, if you can believe, um, tube, well over a million views in the, what, 11 or so, 12 years I've been on this channel. But uh, I want to keep this channel up as long as possible. I want to reach as many people as I can. Uh, I mean, our people believe in the pre-trib rapture. They believe that the Antichrists are chosen you know uh bob what are you talking about well let's take a look all right what is the definition of an antichrist first john 222 tells you who is a liar but he that denieth that jesus is the christ Anybody that denies that Jesus is, a, is the Christ is a liar. Period. If you believe the Bible, which I do. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that 
Uh, let's see. Uh, but he that he is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Think about it. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Is there a group of people that uh, deny Jesus as the Christ and await for another one? Yeah. If you don't know who they are, uh, start going through all the major religious groups and you'll figure it out. 1 Corinthians 16.22 if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. Anathema means cursed. So, um, all right. Let's go to. Uh, that's that's the definition of an antichrist. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Starting in verse 50, we're talking about the resurrection here, or rather Paul is. Corinthians is a uh, talking, well, this is was written to the church at Corinth, a city in Greece. New Testament was written in Greek. So this is a New Testament Greek church. Uh, 15 verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Well, it's corrupted. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, sleeping as in a euphemism for being dead. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Where is the last trump? Well, if you want to know where the last trump is, that's the sound of a trumpet. Look at the book of Revelation, the last book. There are seven trumps, trumpets sounding. And the seventh one is at the end of the tribulation. There is no last trump at the beginning of the tribulation. And almost everybody in the United States believes in the pre-trib rapture. And this verse right here absolutely wipes it out. You know what's going to happen to the faith of millions of people when they find out that they're going to have to suffer and die for the faith of Jesus Christ like millions did before them, like 11 out of the 12 apostles did? And I'm not talking about Judas Iscariot. The only apostle that didn't die for the faith was John, who wrote the book of Revelation. And according to legend, they tried to kill him and they couldn't. So they banished him and exiled him on the Isle of Patmos where he was giving, given the revelation, uh, which means to reveal people. You know, people say, oh, uh, uh, I can't understand revelation. Well, the book, the, the name revelation means to reveal. That's, it's the, from the same root word. And, uh, you know, if you've never read the rest of the Bible, where all the symbolism of Revelation comes from, it's a lot of symbolism. But you have to have read the rest of the Bible to grasp the meaning of the symbolism. Very important. All right, so seed. What does seed mean? Well, just a quick recap. Sometimes it refers to something that you plant to grow a fruit or, yeah, a vegetable or whatever. Sometimes it means children. Sometimes fruit can be our works. 
Yeah, really. Well, here's one, Proverbs 12, 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Are our, are our mouths a tree bearing fruit? No. It's a figure of speech. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. In the book of Jude, Jude, chapter 1, well, there's only one chapter, verse 12, uh, speaking of un, unbelievers that are pretending to be believers, we read, These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Why twice dead? Uh, well, they're dead in the spirit, and they're one day will be dead in the body. When you hear somebody talk about double destruction in the body, I mean, double destruction in the Bible. Uh, I believe that's in Jeremiah. And King David said, May his enemies be destroyed with double destruction. Once with the body and the second with the soul and spirit. So, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Wow. In John 15, 16, Jesus is speaking to the apostles. He says, Ye have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. Uh, everybody that talks about free will, there are people that preach election, that God makes a choice. And then there's other people that say, oh, no, uh, we make the choice. Whosoever will, they call it. But did the apostles choose Jesus or did Jesus choose the apostles? Well, my Bible says Jesus chose the apostles. And of course, the apostles had a choice. Follow Christ or not. So it kind of, it's kind of a two-way street, really. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Paul writes in Philippians 1.22, But if I live in the flesh, if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I wot not. Here's a good one, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit, fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. So sometimes fruit is works things that we do. Hebrews 12, 11. Now, no chastening, being spanked. I'm uh, very familiar with that. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness, fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. And I saved the best for last, for uh, fruit can mean works. Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, 
faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. All right, so fruit can mean a tree, uh, well, seeds of a tree, or something to eat from a tree. It could also mean our works. But it also can mean children. Now, that's what we're going to concentrate on in this part two of fruit. Or seed, I should say. Seed and fruit. All right, let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 12. You know, if uh, Genesis is the foundation of the Bible, and if you've never read it, you can get a lot of wrong ideas. God made a covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. God did not make a covenant with the entire world. He didn't make a covenant with Esau, who he hated, which, believe it or not, was the grandson of Abraham. And Ishmael was not part of the covenant either. Oh, the Lord blessed Ishmael, which the modern Arab world claims to be descended from him, but... He was not part of the covenant. Although he got blessed, but that's it. And I've got an entire Bible study on both those subjects. If you're interested, Genesis 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, now remember, God changed his name to Abraham, which means a father of many, not all, many nations. Lord said, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, of course, your modern demon nominational church world will say that this applies to the Antichrist, but uh, I disagree. But hey, I'm just one voice among many. So. so Abram departed. As the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran, and Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan came they. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sikkim, unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was there, in the land. Listen to this carefully. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed, unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So it's going to be to Abraham and his seed. All right, let's go to Genesis 13 and verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift, it, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. So he's going to give this land to Abram's seed. You know what's interesting is if you look up the word seed in the New Testament, in the Greek, the word is actually sperma, where we get the word sperm. 
And, uh, yeah. Verse 16, And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. There you go, right there. All right, let's go to Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, not the whole world, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Not all. And, of course, uh, the Antichrist in the Middle East is only one nation. God said he would make Abraham the father of many nations. Is one many no. So who's lying? God or those that say that they are all of Abraham? Well, I believe the Bible and Genesis 17 verse 4 tells me who the liar is. The Antichrist. Uh, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? So I'm going to believe my Bible. You can believe whatever you want, but yeah. Verse 5, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed... And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Talking about generations. We're talking about children here. Hmm. Right? All right, let's go down to verse seven, uh, 19, Genesis 17, 19. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Hmm. Let's go to uh, Genesis 21, verse 12. Now, I did an extensive, not extensive, but I did a, moder, a, a modest study on uh, Ishmael, the father of Arab nations, if you're interested. Boy, that, that, I cannot believe how many times that study has been deleted from websites. Unbelievable amount of times. So, Genesis 21, 12. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad. See, his wife Sarah wanted him to kick out Ishmael and the son of Hagar, the Egyptian woman, when Abraham went un unto her. And she said, Kick out this guy. I don't want him to be heir with my son Isaac. And uh, God said, yep, do it. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken or listen unto her voice, for in Isaac, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Not Ishmael, but in Isaac 
shall be the covenant seed. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed, the son of the bondwoman, because he is thy seed. Genesis 22, 17, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed, children, shall possess the gate of his enemies. How about we go to Genesis 24, verse 60. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Do you know that there are people that hate our ancestors? Oh, yeah. But you'll never hear that talked about in most denominational churches. No, uh-uh. They hide that. They want you to think the whole world is part of this covenant and that, you know, God loves everybody. Never mind that the Bible said God hated Esau. And if you don't know why, I got a study on that. All right, in Genesis 38, 8, And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. No, he's not a gardener. He's wanting, it was, uh, when a man died without being having children, it was the brother's duty to marry his brother's wife and raise children unto his brother. Verse 9, And Onan knew that the seed, or children, should not be his, and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest he should give seed to his brother. Mm. God was not pleased and killed him. Still not convinced? Leviticus 12, 12 uh, 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman hath conceived seed... And born a man-child. I mean, come on. This is about as plain as you can get. If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation of her infirmity. Then shall, then shall she be unclean. Leviticus 15.16 if any man's seed of copulation, you know what copulation means? I do. Look it up. If any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and shall be unclean even the even, the evening. And every garment and every skin, whereas is the seed of copulation, shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even even or evening the woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation they shall both bathe themselves in water and shall be unclean until the even all right numbers 528 let's uh nail this and if the woman be not defiled but be clean then she shall be free and shall conceive and shall conceive seed. She is not an apple tree bearing fruit with a seed inside. No. Conceive. You ever heard of a woman conceiving? Yeah. Children. Here's an interesting one. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. And then we're going to read verse 19. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Now, this is half of 
what Jesus said was the great commandment, to love the Lord. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. How about 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 13? O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Uh, Jacob's name was changed of the Lord to Israel. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Hmm. Ezra chapter 9 and verse 2. Boy, this is something you never hear in churches. Uh-uh. Uh, concerning, well, the average church will say, oh, this is talking about believers and unbelievers. But I don't believe that. I think it's between different uh, groups of people. And uh, I, well, read the whole chapter and you tell me what it's about. For they... Israel, have taken of their daughters, the Canaanites, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, H-O-L-Y, holy seed, have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. God told his people to be separated and segregated. Of course, the world says diversity, mix everybody up. But that's not what the Word of God says. And they, they intermarried, and they weren't supposed to. So, Nehemiah 9.2, And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers... And confess their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. Oh, yeah. Job 5.25. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great and thine offspring. You see, seed and offspring in the same breath. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great and thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Job 21.8. Their seed is established in their sight with them and their offspring before their eyes. Boom. Psalms 105, verse 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. I mean, come on, people. Oh, come on, Bob. What, where are you going with this? Well, I will show you in a couple minutes here. All right, Isaiah 41, 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Now, Abraham's not a tree, so we're definitely talking about uh, children, right? So... Do we, uh, are we, do you get the point now? Uh, Jeremiah. Now I have an entire playlist on the book of Jeremiah where I do a commentary on the entire book of Jeremiah. Also, uh, Isaiah. Jeremiah 23, 8. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and led and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, north country, and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. If you look at the land, if you look at a map or a globe, and you look at the land of Israel, and you go north, what do you run into? Europe. But the Lord liveth with brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel 
out of the north country. North country. I mean, come on, people. Uh, what country, what, what continent uh, built all the churches? Uh, I would say Europe. Not Africa. Not Asia. Hmm. Jeremiah 31, 27. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. Whoa. And uh, if you don't know what the beast is, oh boy, that's that. Uh, you have to go look at 100 year old. Um, theology books to get a grasp of the seed of beast. So, yeah. Uh, but this is beyond the scope of this study. All right, well, let's get down to where I've been going with all this. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he, Jesus, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Now, I got an entire playlist on this parable. I think it's four parts. I go into very deep detail. Verse 27. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? Yeah, where did all these weeds come from, dude? Verse 28. Then said he unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said to him, Wilt thou then that we gather, go and gather them up? And he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, the weeds, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. First the tares get bundled. Uh, that verse right alone by itself destroys the pre-trib rapture. The tares, the weeds get gathered first. But the pre-trib rapture people say, no, no, it's God's people. So basically you're telling me the pre-trib rapture Christians are the tares? Think about it. The weeds get gathered first. Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Now, if you skip down to, let's see, what verse is it? Verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him and saying, uh, Hey, Jesus, we're dumb. We don't, we don't understand that parable. Can you, uh, what does it mean? Well, that's the Bob transliteration, I guess you could say. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and the disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He, Jesus, answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, Adam. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, Cain and Se uh, not Cain, but Abel and Seth. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Uh, that's Cain, people. 
but the tares, the weeds, are the children of the wicked one. Now I ask you a question. Those of you that think Adam is the father of everybody, is Adam the wicked one? I don't think so. Verse 39, the enemy that sowed them, the bad seed, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The devil. Is Adam the devil? I don't think so. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. This world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels and shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Wow. Wow. The enemy that sowed the tares is the devil. All right, let's go to Genesis. Uh, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Doesn't say, well, you're grafted in and you become Abraham's seed. Doesn't say anything about your the spiritual seed. It says, then are ye Abraham's seed. You are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Plain as day, right? Speaking of the end times, Revelation chapter 12, 17, and the dragon. Now remember the Bible in Revelation 12, it tells you the old serpent, the dragon called the devil and Satan. And the dragon was wroth, angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I don't care if you keep God's commandments. If you don't have the testimony of Jesus Christ, you're in big trouble. And if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, you want to keep the commandments of God. Which commandments? The two commandments. Someone once asked Jesus, what was the most important commandment? Matthew twenty-two thirty-six, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And I don't think we're supposed to love God's enemies, but hey, that's, you know, what can I tell you? So, the enemy that sowed the tares, the bad seed, is the wicked one. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 10, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Uh, wow. Remember, we just read the, par the parable of the wheat and the tares. The wheat are God's children. The tares are the children of the wicked one. Not my ex uh, that's not my, Bob's interpretation. That's exactly what Jesus, out of the mouth of Jesus, who is Christ. You don't believe me, back this up five or ten minutes and then listen again. 
In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Uh, is Adam the wicked one? I don't think Adam's a wicked one. I think Cain was fathered by the wicked one. And I don't think it was Adam. And yeah, I know, they'll immediately go to Genesis chapter 4 and tell you, and Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived, and bare Cain. But read the parable of the wheat and the tares again. Read, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Or verse 10, in this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Children of the devil. Spiritual children or physical and spiritual? You tell me. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to close this out. All right, you got your Bibles on Genesis chapter 3? Let's learn something. I guess verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he, the serpent, said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? What is a serpent? Well, let's have the Bible Explain the Bible, the King James, that is. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, old serpent, that should tell you Genesis, people, old. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. Uh... Unless, of course, you want to believe in talking snakes. It's a figure of speech, people. You know, when a guy goes to the beach, and there's a very attractive woman dressed in a bikini, and he nudges his buddy in the ribs with his elbow and says, Hey, look at that. Boy, is she a fox or what? Yeah, figure of speech, people. She's not a four-legged canine with a tail. No. No. No, it's a figure of speech. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. Period. Back to Genesis 3. Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, She's not talking to a snake here, people. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit fruit of the tree is this works but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God hath said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die does fruit here mean works I think so for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Now remember, sometimes tree means uh, something made of wood. Sometimes it was referring to family trees. What, Bob? What are you talking about? Oh, okay, let's take a look. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 31. The Bible explains the Bible, people. You get on your hands and knees and ask God for understanding, James chapter 1. He'll give it to you. Verse 1. 
Ezekiel 31, 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Behold, the Assyrian. The Assyrians were a people who conquered northern Israel. Think about it. The Assyrians were a people. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. What is a cedar? It's a type of tree. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. The Assyrians are likened unto a tree. And by the way, the cedars of Lebanon were very, very famous trees. Very large, majestic trees. Uh, cedar, perhaps you've seen cedar wood chips that you throw in your closet and it keeps the moths away from your wool clothes. Uh, insects do not like cedar wood. Something about the oil. And it's pretty much rot proof. Very, very expensive. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of an high stature and his top was among the thick boughs. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers running round about his plants and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. Waters. Let's take a look at waters. In Revelation 17, 15, talking about the beast, the whore that sits on many waters, and he saith unto me, the waters, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Sometimes waters are a figure of speech for people, nations, and their languages. Keep that in mind. Back to Ezekiel 31.4. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers running round about his plants and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field. Now remember, the Assyrian Empire was huge and was not destroyed until the Babylonian Empire came. It was the Babylonians that conquered the Assyrians. And you can read about that in Jeremiah, and you can read about that in the book of Daniel. Uh, verse 5. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all the great nations. Now, how can all great nations be underneath a tree? It's a figure of speech, people. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters, great nations, great peoples. Verse 8, listen to this carefully. The cedars in the garden of God the Garden of Eden people, the cedars in the Garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the Garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. Nor any tree in the Garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden 
that were in the garden of God envied him. What? Trees have envy? So that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Family trees, people. Wood does not have the emotion of envy. Let's go back to Genesis 3 with this in mind. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat, eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, what happens when a man desires a woman, right? And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Huh. All right. Uh, here's a very, very, very important verse. Proverbs 30 and verse 20. Such is the way of an, an adulterous woman. What is an adulterous woman? A woman that plays around with men that are not her husband. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth, she eats, and wipeth her mouth, and saith, I have done no wickedness. Huh. Um, yeah. A woman that's adulterous. She eats, wipes her mouth, and says, I've done nothing wrong. Let's go back and read Genesis 3, 6 again. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Oh, wait a minute. If they're eating fruit, uh, why are, what's the deal of them being naked? And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Well, if they were eating a piece of fruit, why didn't they get something to cover their mouth? Why are they making themselves aprons? What do aprons cover? They're private parts, people, right? Come on, pay attention. This is not a fairy tale for children's Sunday school. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Hey, Adam, where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, It's the woman's fault, she did it. Well, not exactly, but... And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. See, God, it's your fault. You gave me this woman, and she did this. Well, that, sh that stuff does not fly with the Lord. Verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, It's the serpent's fault. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Look at that word beguiled in an old, old, old dictionary. It means to be tricked, to be seduced. Spiritually, physically, the whole deal. Uh, 
the modern dictionaries don't even record that anymore. I had a dictionary that was about 40 years old. And yeah. The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. The serpent seduced me and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Woo. All right, let's go read Genesis 3.15. God speaking, and I will put enmity. What is enmity? Extreme hatred. And I will put enmity between thee, the serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and I will put enmity between thee, thee and the woman, and between thy seed, serpent seed, and between thy seed and her seed. Is the serpent a tree? Is the serpent a, an apple tree? No. And I will put enmity, enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Listen to this carefully. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your toothaches because you ate an apple from the tree. No. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. What is conception? It means you're going to have a child. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Now, if, he, if Eve ate a piece of apple off of a tree, why is the Lord saying he's going to multiply sorrow and conception? In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. What? What are... Come on, people. It's as plain as day. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Who was her desire for before this? Satan is described as a beautiful angel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Whoa. Are you, do you get the idea? Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Come on, what, are, what is bread made out of? Bread is made of wheat. Oh, it has other ingredients, but it's made of wheat or rye. It's not like rye. It's not like wheat. It is made of wheat with sugar, salt, and other things, you know. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Who's the wicked one? It's not Adam. Like most your people teach. Do you get the idea of what happened in the garden? There's a satanic seed line on this earth who hate us from birth because God put enmity between the woman and between his seed and the woman's seed. Does it get any plainer than this? No. Let's take a look at Je uh, Ezekiel 28. Verse 11, we're going to describe what the serpent looked like. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Now, we're going to find out this king of Tyrus uh, is not merely a human person. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Hmm. 
thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Ezekiel was many hundreds of years after Adam and Eve. The king of Tyrus could not be uh, impossible. People don't live past 120 years per the Lord. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Not born, created. The angels were created. Adam was created. Eve was created. Not born. Think about it. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. What's a cherub? It's a special type of angel. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity, wickedness, or sin, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. There was a war in heaven, people. Revelation chapter 12. Violence. War is violence. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Satan's pride of his beauty lifted him up. Satan was a beautiful cherub. He, Adam probably was pale in comparison. What did Eve? Thy desire shall be to thy husband? Who was her desire for prior to this? Think about it. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Satan is called an angel of light. I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. People, there is a seed line on this earth that hate us. And almost no churches will teach this stuff. I avoided it for many, many years, and I apologize, but, you know, this is not an essential doctrine. I mean, if you want to be mature in the faith, it is, but believing in the sea lines is not in and of itself an essential doctrine. Believing in Christ is. You know, but if I could get people to understand the preacher of rapture is a lie, that's important, in my opinion. Because many are going to fall by the wayside. Many, many, many. And they're going to worship the Messiah of the Antichrist when they build the temple. So, what can I tell you? Does Genesis chapter 3 make sense to you now? Does the parable of the wheat and the tares make sense to you now? The enemy that sowed them is the devil? Not as Cain, who is of that wicked one. Come on, people. There's a reason why the Lord said, go into the land and kill all the Canaanites. Kill them all. He didn't say, well, you know, they don't believe. But go in there and send evangelists and tell them about the love of Jesus. Tell them I love them. No. Go in and kill them all. You know, the book is not that hard to understand when you have the keys. So, uh, but I must apologize because I've avoided this subject for a long time. Well, I'm done. I'm going to preach the whole counsel of the Lord. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.